Hello, this is Lisa with Quilting Block of the Month Facebook group. And this is our fourth block for May 2020. It's called Crossed Canoes. This one does require printing out a template for cutting out your blocks. So you'll need to go to our blog and print this out so that you have the pieces to cut. When you get the block pattern printed out, make sure that you do it to not fit to page or scale, you want it to do actual size. And the reason for this is you want to make sure your templates print the correct size. There is a block on here, this is one inch square. Make sure when printing, it literally means get your ruler out, lay it up over it, and make sure that that is a one inch square. That is one inch is this way, one inch is that way, that it's not too big or too small, because that's going to adjust the size of your pieces here and make a difference when you're cutting them out. So what you do need to do is you will cut out, if you're doing a two pattern like this, you will cut each of the four pieces out twice of each color. So you have a total of four pieces of each of the four pieces, two of each color. Again, you can do it scrappy, you could do this is one set of colors and another here, and just however you want to do it. I want to do, since I've got these two bright colors here, I'm going to do one for our the video in four different colored corners. So I've gone ahead and I cut out one piece of each color out of the template. So I've got a total of four pieces for each of the templates. And so now I will show you how to put the blocks together. Okay, to assemble your blocks, this is your corner square of your block. So you're going to repeat this and make four of these in whatever color schemes you're wanting to do. So that is this little piece right here. So basically it's four of them and you're just kind of rotating them around. So you've got your pieces like this. So let's get the templates off. And so we lay our pieces out like this. This just helps you get set up. And then you can just let's scoot it over here. And then, like I said, I'm going to do mine a little bit different this time. And so, there is my block. Once it gets all sewn together, and so see I've got the opposites here and I've got opposites here. Just gives a little bit different fun. Just make sure when you're laying your pieces out that you don't sit there and go, okay, let's see this one and this one and that. And see how it doesn't make into a square. Because these two pieces are backwards. So you want all three of your points, smaller points, together, and then that'll go at the top. So that'll make you into your squares. Okay, so the first part what we're going to do is you're going to take these. You are going to fold this corner over, lining it up, and you're going to just sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. Then you are going to press it open and I would press it towards this color, this piece here, just to reduce all that bulk in the middle. Then you're going to fold this piece over and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to stitch a quarter of inch seam allowance there and then you're going to press it open and again press it towards the pink or the outside color. And then after that, once those are all attached, then this will just line up here perfect, stitch it, and fold it out. I'll show you each of these steps as we go along. Okay, after you've sewn your quarter of an inch seam allowance here, go ahead and fold this over and press. Again, you're pressing outward away from your centerpiece just to reduce the bulk down here in the corner. So as you can see, I've pressed towards the pink. So then the next step you're going to do you're going to take the other piece, you're going to roll it up and match it up and you're going to sew your quarter of an inch seam allowance going up as well. I've got the purple one here done where I've got the, the seam allowance in there. Again, press it out, press it towards these outer blocks away from the center as you can see. Again, to reduce this bulk because it would get very bulky if you tried to do it down there. 
then you're going to take this, your triangle piece here, you're going to lay it up there, match it up on your two sides, and then you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance across there, and then you are going to press it open. So this one here, I've got my quarter of an inch seam, seam there. I'm going to go ahead and fold it up and press it. And again, I'm trying to keep the bulk away from being pushed in, so I've gone ahead and pushed it out. So you've got your there. Now at this point, you're going to have to do four of these for all four of your corners and either two sets of opposites or in this case I've got four different color schemes. And then you're just going to take your ruler and you're going to make sure that you've got six and a half inch by six and a half inch. It needs, they all need to be six and a half each. If you need to trim off, don't just trim off, okay, I'm going to do over here and trim this side. You need to do it centered, some off this side and this, some here and here, just to keep your block centered so that this is completely in the center. Then you will finish all four of those blocks. And then I'll show you here in a minute how to assemble those. Okay, I've got all four of the corner blocks created. I did discover one thing when I was getting ready to assemble this part, is when you press the seams, let's flip these over upside down here. When you're pressing this top, cor top triangle, if you press two towards the center here, towards the little triangle, and two away from it, it's gonna help when you go to put the blocks together to be able to nest your blocks and reduce a little bit of the bulk. Otherwise, you have all those layers in one spot. Um, so it's up to you. You can press them all forward. You could actually go ahead and press them all open, whichever way you want to do it. Um, but I went ahead and I pressed two to the middle and two outward. And so now to assemble the block, after you get them laid out the way you like, then you can go ahead and sew two together and two together. And just fold them over. Stitch a quarter inch seam allowance along both. Then we're going to open them back up. And then we will stitch the two rows together. So when you press the first stitching down, make sure you press them opposite so you can nest them in the center. Okay, so I've sewn the top two together and the bottom two together. And again, I press the seams, one one way and one the other, just so we can nest. Once you get them together, your points should kind of match up here and here. I got two that did and two that didn't. Not a big worry. Um, probably won't even notice it once all the quilt is together. And so now we're just going to fold this over. We're going to nest this center here, match it up, and we're going to sew a quarter of an, quarter of an inch down this way and then we'll press it open. Okay, after you've sewn those two rows together and you press it, your seams, you have completed your block. Now I will want to show you, I did go ahead and press my seam open just because there's a lot of bulk here in these points and so it just reduced it a little bit. It's completely again up to you how you want to press it. If you want to open them up, press them one way, press them the other way. But look how much fun that is with the multicolors in it. You can do this all just two darker colors, a light and a darker color, or you can just do a combination. And it's really a fun block. So this is our Crossing Canoes block for May for Quilting Block of the Month Facebook group. Please take the time to post your blocks. I'd love to see what everybody's blocks look like.